On a sunny holiday morning, a rare sight these days, I heard footsteps. Entering the living room were Kevin and Elizabeth. They came in with loads of baggage, breathing heavily, but upon seeing me, they put on sarcastic smiles and dropped a bombshell. From today, we're moving in with you. If you don't like it, divorce me and leave. Ignoring my shock, Kevin and the others started spreading their belongings in the living room. Then, Stella, who looked apologetic, followed. I quietly opened my mouth. It's okay, but are you sure? I mean, she... Huh? Kevin turned pale upon hearing me, and then he dashed out of the house. A few minutes later, he called. When I answered, he began shouting so loud it could be heard where Elizabeth was. Are you kidding me? Why didn't you say anything? Oh, I thought I mentioned it before. After a pause, Kevin said, Anyway, I'm coming back, and abruptly hung up. Elizabeth looked like she might faint at Kevin's yelling. I'm looking forward to Kevin coming back, I said. At my words, Elizabeth's shoulders twitched in surprise. Brace yourself. The retaliation starts now. I'm Madison, a 45-year-old office worker. Last year, I was transferred to a busy department and have been incredibly busy since. I married Kevin when I was 40. We met at a company year-end party where Kevin was invited as a guest. As his hostess, we hit it off being from the same hometown. Kevin, five years my senior, was the assertive type and a godsend to me, who had almost given up on marriage as I approached 40. We married after dating for a year. No wedding ceremony, as he said it was a waste, which left me a bit sad. But in retrospect, I should have reconsidered the marriage then. Hey, you slacked off on laundry again, didn't you? Kevin is what you'd call a hen-pecked husband. Having lived alone before marriage, he could do household chores. Men shouldn't do housework, but he refused, saying. I planned to do it tonight since I got home late from overtime, I replied. Coming home to be yelled at only exhausted me more. Kevin, displeased with my attitude, began to angrily raise his eyebrows. Don't talk back, wife. Who do you think provides the food you eat? Honestly, I earn more than Kevin. When we married, he knew this and chose a dual-income lifestyle. But a year into the marriage, he seemed to have completely forgotten. Initially, I argued back, but as Kevin got more heated and yelled more, I started apologizing quickly just to keep the peace. I'm sorry, it was my fault. Do you really think so? Yes, thank you. It's because of your hard work that we can live this life. Saying so would satisfy Kevin. Then, he would hum a tune and go take a bath. At first, I found his henpecked behavior manly, but after three years, I was fed up. Yet, I didn't choose divorce because my in-laws were wonderful people. I'd go out to lunch with my mother-in-law Mia once a month, and my father-in-law Ricky gave me birthday gifts. When at the in-law's house, Kevin was kind and smiled, and we had pleasant times. My own parents died early, so my kind in-laws were as important as real parents. That's why I hesitated on divorce. But there was something I couldn't tolerate. It was Elizabeth, Kevin's sister-in-law who lived nearby. Elizabeth, divorced due to her infidelity, now lives alone in an apartment. Apparently, the reason for the divorce was Elizabeth's affair. Since hearing of this, I disliked her. Elizabeth disliked me too, bad-mouthing me even in front of Kevin, who doted on her and joined in rather than reprimanding her. Elizabeth had a daughter, Stella, whose custody belonged to her ex-husband. Stella, the spitting image of Elizabeth but completely different in character, was a very good girl. Stella used to come visit Elizabeth about twice a month. Each time, Elizabeth would bring Stella to our house. Just a minute, Madison. Please feed Stella something delicious. I'm heading out now. Eh, so suddenly. Thanks, bye. Elizabeth would rattle this off one-sidedly and leave without waiting for my reply. Each time, Stella would apologize. I couldn't ignore such an honest girl like Stella, so I ended up feeding her and taking her to various places. Madison, thank you always. It's okay. Did you have fun? 
Yes, it was really fun. Can I come again? Of course. Asking me timidly while watching my face, I couldn't say no to Stella. Plus, I didn't have children of my own, so I found Stella endearing. But I thought it wasn't good that Elizabeth, her real mom, was never there for Stella's visits. So I decided to ask Kevin. Hey, whenever Stella comes, Elizabeth is never around. Can't she spend a little more time with her? I meant only well for Stella, but Kevin didn't take it that way. His face turned red in an instant, and with a look of anger, he yelled at me. Elizabeth is hurt from her divorce. Unlike you, she's delicate. And yet you blame her? No, it's not like that. Just wondering where she goes every time after dropping Stella off. There's no need for you to know. Just shut up and listen. I stopped talking further to Kevin, who wouldn't listen at all. After a few apologies, a calmed Kevin suddenly started preparing to go out. I'm heading out. Where are you going? It's my business. You just stay quiet and say, have a nice day. Kevin yelled that and slammed the door as he left. Alone in the quiet room, I cried. And then I seriously began to consider divorce. Though I thought of divorce, I hadn't made up my mind because of the in-laws. Amidst this, Mia invited me for lunch, and I decided to go out after a long time. Where are you going on your day off? I'm going to lunch with Kevin's mom. With mom? You better not talk about Elizabeth. Why not? I asked back, not understanding his words. Kevin shouted in irritation. Can't you think a little? You really are stupid. Just go already, and don't talk about Elizabeth. Without waiting for my reply, Kevin pushed me out of the house. Still not satisfied, I met Mia and talked over lunch. By the way, Elizabeth is coming over, right? Eh, you knew? I thought so. Mia sighed deeply and then apologized to me. Apparently, Stella had told her that she was bothering me by coming to see Mia. I thought I raised her strictly, but maybe it's a reaction. She's into nightclubs. Nightclubs? That's right. She seems to have a considerable debt. I was surprised by Mia's words. When Elizabeth came to our house, she always dressed in branded clothes and seemed well off. When I told Mia this, she looked even more troubled. That child, we've cut ties with her. So, Madison, you should too. Kevin's probably spoiling Elizabeth, right? Mia said that when Elizabeth's affair came to light, Kevin kept blaming the ex-husband until the end. He even paid off her debts once, I learned. And that was an eye-opener for me. I'm thinking of divorcing Kevin. I'm sorry for the trouble. That's all right. I'll support you. Mia said, holding my hand. Thinking how it would be if my mom were alive, I started planning for the divorce. The preparations progressed meticulously, so Kevin wouldn't notice. Hoping to awaken Kevin to reality, I casually mentioned Elizabeth's debts, but Kevin wouldn't listen. Instead, facing Kevin's yelling, I found I could no longer feel love for him. Thanks to the help of the in-laws, I gathered plenty of evidence and learned astonishing truths. Then, the day of action arrived unexpectedly. On a sunny holiday morning, rare these days, I heard footsteps. Entering the living room were Kevin and Elizabeth. They came in with loads of baggage, breathing heavily, but upon seeing me, they put on sarcastic smiles and dropped a bombshell. We're moving in with you, starting today. If you don't like it, divorce me and leave. Ignoring my shock, Kevin and the others started spreading their belongings in the living room. Then Stella, looking apologetic, followed. I quietly spoke. It's okay, but are you sure? I mean, she... Huh? Kevin turned pale upon hearing me, and then he dashed out of the house. A few minutes later, he called. When I answered, he began shouting so loud it could be heard where Elizabeth was. Are you kidding me? Why didn't you say anything? Oh, I thought I mentioned it before. After a pause, Kevin said, Anyway, I'm coming back, and abruptly hung up. Elizabeth looked like she might faint at Kevin's yelling. I'm looking forward to Kevin coming back, I said, 
At my words, Elizabeth's shoulders twitched in surprise. Brace yourself. The retaliation starts now. As soon as Kevin returned, he confronted Elizabeth. Elizabeth, what's this about debts? I didn't hear anything about it. It's just a small debt, Elizabeth answered, avoiding eye contact. I couldn't help but laugh. Elizabeth glared at me. I decided to respond to that glare. Amazing, Elizabeth, calling $150,000 a small debt? I couldn't say that about such a high amount. Rich people are different. $150,000? Elizabeth turned to me with a face that looked about to cry when I casually revealed the amount, but I had no intention of letting her off. I continued, unilaterally. The guy from the nightclub? He recently got married, right? Elizabeth got dumped, huh? I'm not dumped. Once I get this house, he'll come back to me. And when we sell this place, the money, oh. Elizabeth inadvertently spilled her plan and looked at Kevin with a, I messed up face. Kevin, confused, kept looking back and forth between me and Elizabeth. I decided to tell Kevin the truth. Elizabeth planned to kick me out, then eventually you, and sell this house. With the money, she'd pay off her debts and fund her nightclub guy. What the hell is that? Kevin stood there dumbfounded. He couldn't believe his beloved sister was using him like this. Was it all a lie? I want to live with Stella, so let us stay. I was planning to work and support both you and Stella? Hearing Kevin's words, my head ached. He couldn't support his wife, but planned to support his sister and niece? Elizabeth defiantly replied to Kevin's question. You're just an ATM, big brother. Once we sell the house, I can go back to him. Won't you listen to my request? ATM? What's that about? Ah, enough. Elizabeth, brazen, and Kevin, furious, were leaving me out and yelling at each other. Their fight was ugly and ridiculous. The one who spoke to them wasn't me, but Stella. Enough, both Kevin and mom. I don't want to live together and I only came today to say goodbye. Stella, what do you mean? This shocked both Elizabeth and Kevin and they stopped fighting to look at Stella. Stella sighed deeply, looked straight at Elizabeth and began to speak slowly. <sighs> mom, you're not interested in my life, right? I think I told you before, but I'm going to study abroad from high school. So today was to say that. I didn't hear anything like that. Elizabeth raised her voice, and Stella was looking at Elizabeth with a cool, disdainful gaze. Because you never really listened. Always chasing after men. I don't need a mom like that. For me, Madison is my mom. Huh? What do you mean? Elizabeth glared at her as if she were an enemy. But I was just as surprised. Stella came up to me and hugged me. Thank you for holding my hand, for the delicious meals and for listening and taking me places. You felt like a real mom. Stella's words warmed my heart. I felt a sense of fulfillment and happiness, as if everything I had done for Stella had come to fruition. I never had children, so I often worried if my way of interacting with Stella was correct. That's why I was even more moved. Stella, I too was happy to be with you. Do your best over there too. As I said this and wiped my tears, Stella smiled at me. Yeah, I want to call and send messages. Is that okay? Of course. Stella and I looked at each other and laughed. Elizabeth was watching us resentfully. Then, with a smug smile as if she had an idea, she started laughing. Stella, I'll go with you. Eh, why? It's hard to live there alone, isn't it? Let's live together. They'll pay for our living expenses, right? I was astounded by her audacity. Stella, beside me, looked just as disgusted. Unaware of our reactions, Elizabeth started fantasizing about life after going abroad. Mom, while Stella's at school, we can go to the beach or, or shopping. When she's at her part-time job, I'll take a nap. At night, I'll go out a bit. Elizabeth talked only about leisure with no mention of work. Stella looked at her with contempt, suddenly burst into laughter. <laughs> 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 
what's so funny? It's hilarious. Why would I want to live with you? Besides, I'm going to be in a dormitory, so you can't come. Elizabeth's face turned red with anger, but Stella didn't stop there. Just as Elizabeth was about to lash out at Stella, an interruption came. Enough already! Dad? Ricky suddenly appeared in the living room, surprising Elizabeth. Beside him was Mia, her eyebrows raised in anger. Coming here after hearing from Madison, and what do I find? How long will you keep troubling others, Elizabeth? Mom, this is a misunderstanding. Stella decided this on her own. In the middle of Elizabeth's words, Mia approached her and raised her hand. A loud sound echoed in the living room, followed by silence. The first to speak was Elizabeth. That's awful to hit me, Mia retorted sharply. You deserve it. I was wrong to leave you alone after causing trouble to Madison. We've arranged for you to stay with a relative. We're going there now. Elizabeth turned pale and looked to Kevin for help, but he averted his gaze, feeling betrayed. Left isolated and despairing, Elizabeth was led out of our house by Ricky. Hey, I'm sorry. I should have listened to Madison more. I'll listen from now on. What a naive thought, Mia retorted to Kevin's casual words. To the surprised Kevin, Mia continued emotionlessly. I told you before not to involve yourself with Elizabeth, even more so if you're married, but you didn't listen. Now the only choice is divorce. Kevin looked at me, pale-faced. I smiled at him. Then, feeling slightly relieved, I prepared to drop the bombshell. Let's get a divorce. I'll also claim alimony for your verbal abuse. And let's see, maybe for infidelity, too. Infidelity? What are you talking about? Kevin stumbled over his words, trying to feign ignorance. I felt pathetic for once, thinking such a man was reliable. I pulled out several photos from my bag. You recognize this woman, don't you? Did you take secret photos? If someone's doing something they shouldn't, isn't it their fault? Kevin, seemingly out of excuses, just stayed silent, looking frustrated. I laid out the documents and had him sign them. After everything was finalized, I spoke to Kevin with a smile. Thank you for everything. Though I made more money, did all the housework and handled everything else, it was me who took care of everything. So take care. Don't forget the payments. Kevin had nothing more to say to my words. I said goodbye to Mia and left our house. I arranged to pick up my belongings later and stayed at a nearby hotel after dropping Stella off at her home. A clean room, a soft bed, and a space without anyone to complain. That's when I finally regained my freedom after five years. The next day, I promptly filed for divorce and became truly free. Mia called to apologize and assure that Kevin would deposit the alimony within a week, which he did, in full. Since Kevin had little savings due to giving money to Elizabeth, the in-laws had paid the alimony in advance. Regarding this, they'll get Kevin to repay it in full, so don't worry, they told me. Kevin lost his job and was sent to live with a different relative. He ended up on a farm, working from dawn to dusk, without holidays. Escape was impossible without a car, and the mountain roads were too much for Kevin, who had never driven them. I thought it was tough, but didn't feel sorry for him. Kevin's affair partner was a club girl who only saw him as a paying customer. She didn't even know he was married and apologized when I met her. She even returned the branded bags Kevin had given her, which I sold and used the money for lunches with Stella. Elizabeth was sent to live with relatives near the sea, working from sunrise every day. Her once well-maintained hair and nails were now completely ruined. Apparently, she had fallen behind on child support payments for Stella, and the relatives have covered it, so now she worked unpaid. I could only hope she might change her ways. Stella, meanwhile, successfully went abroad and now lives in an overseas dormitory. She's gotten close to a girl she shares a room with, and I receive messages about their daily adventures. She's planning to bring her friend during a long break, and I've agreed to host them for sightseeing. As for me, my days are still busy, but without the marriage, my chores are halved. 
and there's no one to complain. It's a different kind of busy, much more fulfilling. When I dropped Stella off, I met her dad, Elizabeth's ex-husband, for the first time. A nice guy. We exchanged contacts. As we kept in touch about Stella, we started going out together. I found peace just being with him, something I never had with Kevin. Even I am a bit surprised by these feelings. Stella is thrilled about me seeing him. On a video call recently, when are you getting remarried? She asked. I'm not thinking about it yet, but if he feels the same, maybe someday. To me, Stella is like a true daughter and she feels the same about me. Becoming a real family would make me incredibly happy. With that hope in my heart, I head to work today as well.